converting analog PLC values. In this presentation, we're gonna look at how we do some calculations in order to verify if an analog device is operating properly based on the value that it's measuring and the amount of current or voltage that it is registering. So first thing we need to do is have a basic idea as to what the different values are that we could be expecting. And for most part, in PLCs and process control, the two most common forms of analog signal are either 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts DC. Now keep in mind, these can be used on both input or output devices. And we say this because sometimes you're actually controlling something or you are measuring something based on a process variable. So inputs or outputs. All right, well, let's take a look at an example then. And the example we're gonna look at is this, a pressure transmitter, which is going to be operating on the four to 20 milliamp analog signal. The pressure transmitter is connected into a process pipe of some sort, and that process pipe is at an actual real-time pressure of 36.8 PSI. Now we're taking a measurement on this conductor and we wanna verify is the pressure transmitter actually operating correctly. And the only way we can do that is if we have some idea as to what it should be. So a few steps that we need to follow. The first thing we need to know is this. What is the range of the measurement that we're planning on actually measuring with this pressure transmitter? And what I mean by that, is we're actually measuring 36.8, but what's the high end that this transmitter's supposed to measure and what's the low end? And so I'm gonna say for this example that we're expecting with this pressure transmitter to measure any pressure between zero to 1500 PSI. The next step we're gonna do is figure out what the percent is, the value of the maximum. So the value is 36.8, the maximum is 1500. And so we're gonna do a very basic percentage calculation, 36.8 divided by 1500, and this will give me a percentage of 2.45%. Now that I have this, I can look towards the analog signal and do a final calculation to determine how many amps should actually be flowing to the pressure transmitter. The third step uses this calculation the high value minus the low times the percentage plus the low again at the end. And what this looks like is then 20 minus four times 0 0.0245, and then we add four in at the very end. Now remember, there's a bunch of brackets in here, so if you simply plug your numbers in without taking into account the order of operation, you're gonna come out with a number that's incorrect. What we get from this, is 4.392 milliamps of analog current. This is the value of current that we would expect at 36.8 PSI. So this calculation can be used to validate or verify any amount of pressure that we happen to have on the transmitter for what the actual signal value should be. Well, let's take a look at a different application. This was using a pressure transmitter and we're assuming it's going to a PLC. So this signal here would actually be an input signal to my PLC. Let's take a look at a different type of scenario. This time we're gonna look at an output. And the output we're gonna look at is a butterfly valve. Now the butterfly valve is gonna operate on four to 20 milliamp analog value. I'm going to zoom out a bit. There we go. 4 to 20 milliamp analog value, and we're actually measuring 15.6 milliamps. Now, if we take a look at how this system will operate, it's actually going to drive energy to move the humongous valve in here through instrument air or air pressure. And this, the 15.6 milliamps, is going to be used from the PLC in order to tell this ball valve how far to open, or butterfly valve, rather. Now, remember, we need to know what the range is that we're expecting. And for this particular type of system, 
zero to 90 degrees is what we're going to be operating with. That's as far as that valve will open. Zero, which would be fully closed, or 90 degrees, which would be fully open. So let's go through the calculation. So this time we're trying to figure out how many degrees will this butterfly valve be open. It's a little bit different compared to the previous example, so follow along. The first thing we need to know is what's the range of the signal that we're dealing with. Now this work gets a little bit tricky because four to 20 milliamps means that we really have 16 milliamps worth of range. We take 20 and subtract four. The second item we need to calculate is the percent of the signal. Now remember, our maximum is now only 16. And in order to find the percentage, we're gonna to have to take our actual value and subtract four to bring them both down to the same value. Now that we've done that, we can apply the percentage calculation. 11.6 divided by 16 will give me 72.5%. Now what we have to do is a pretty simple application, although I suppose we could use this calculation, really 90 minus zero times 0.725 plus zero is the same as just taking 72.5% of 90. And what this leaves us with is the valve opening to a precise angle of 65.97 degrees. If we found that the valve angle was far more or far less, we would then conclude that there must be something wrong with the assembly because this should result in that amount of physical movement. 